Welcome back to the Discoverer Project. In our last episode, we cleaned up the Discoverer by removing all the old hardware, pumps, and gauges. We then cut open the floor and removed the old fiberglass fuel tanks. Throughout this process, we've noticed that the floor underneath our feet is a little soft. Well, all that's about to change in this episode of The Discoverer Project. The first step is to cut open this old front deck and see just how soft the wood underneath is. While Jack scraped out the front deck in preparation for its new wood, there were other carpentry projects going on. Craig and Carl built a weatherproof shed in the back of the boat shop to house all our tools. Charlie went to work on the starboard side of the Discoverer, fixing a hole where the bathroom pump out was. Then he proceeded below decks to build this fighting chair mount and the new floor for the rear of the cockpit. When we peeled back the top layer of fiberglass, most of this wood has rotted away to the point it's not even recognizable. The water intrusion on the deck is extreme. There's no way that this soft floor would last for any length of time. The little cubes of wood are random pieces that did not rot into oblivion. So this image should give you an idea of how much slop was sandwiched between the fiberglass of the deck. Our goal is to fabricate a new front deck out of 3 quarter inch marine plywood and fiberglass it in place of the old rotted floor. Jack and Craig make a pattern out of butcher paper then transferred that pattern onto a 1 8 inch piece of press board. The press board is rigid enough to simulate real wood, and we can grind and sand it to make it fit the hole. Once fitted, we can cut the expensive plywood and know that we're not making any mistakes. We discovered a problem when we completed the press board mock-up. The tip of the nose is 4 foot 10 inches from the base of the cabin. And as you know, plywood comes in four foot wide sheets. This graphic illustrates the problem. Our only option would be to scab in a 10 inch wide piece to round out the nose and somehow retain the strength of the wood in this particularly vulnerable point. Our friends at Hood Distribution searched far and wide and tracked down a beautiful 10 foot long by five foot wide piece of marine plywood. Now we can build the nose out of a single piece of wood, which will make it drastically stronger and the installation about a million times easier. Craig transferred the pattern to the marine plywood and cut the rough shape with a jigsaw. Then he sculpted the wood down to form with an air-powered DA armed with 180 grit paper. Craig continued by tapering the underside of the deck wood to mate with the tapered edge we created on the hull. The idea is to make a clean mating surface where the wood and the fiberglass transfer weight between each other with as much surface contact as possible. The final step was to flare the flat edge that mates with the cabin. Craig removes about a quarter inch of wood and takes care to make a smooth bevel at the edges. A similar amount of preparation went into the hole that will accept this new wood. Charlie carefully creates a 45 degree angled edge on both sides, the inner one to accept the new wood and the outer to give a good surface to allow the roven woven fiberglass to fold over. After sanding, we clean up all the debris with an air nozzle and then thoroughly wipe all surfaces with acetone. For the installation, Charlie laid down a thick layer of epoxy resin on the new deck wood and on the existing hull. We added a layer of standard 2 ounce fiberglass mat 
then sandwich that mat under the wood. To pull it all together, Charlie inserted wood screws through the top into plywood blocks that an assistant was holding below decks. This squeezed the fiberglass epoxy and plywood sandwich and pushed out any air pockets to the edges. After a day to cure, Charlie and Jack installed two layers of woven roven fiberglass mat. This extra strong weave of fiberglass is used in structural elements all over this boat. Once the woven roven had cured, Matt and Craig began the arduous process of shaping the nose and filling all the low spots with fiberglass resin. Some people would use Bondo or Duraglass to bring these low spots up to level, but we want to keep the construction on the Discoverer 100% fiberglass. Taking the time to keep it pure fiberglass now means that repairs down the road are going to be much more predictable. For the finish layer, Matt lays down two quarts of fiberglass resin and encases it in wax paper to create a flat surface. Once that's sanded flat, a final top coat of fiberglass resin and phenolic micro balloons create a surface as smooth as a dance floor. The new nose on the Discover is stronger than ever. Where before was soupy pieces of cubed wood, there's now an unbreakable sandwich of fiberglass mat, marine plywood, and epoxy resin that should definitely stand the test of time. We repeated this process with the side gunnels, the rear transom deck, the floor, and coated all these pieces with a final layer of micro balloon resin mix. Now that the Discover is sturdy as a rock, we're ready to begin the final preparations for painting. It's time to get out your DA grinders and your spray guns, because things are really going to fly on the next episode of the Discoverer Project.